fascists, real like white nationalists in particular, tend to recruit from very discrete communities. They go into like the skinhead or punk rock scene or neo folk scene. Um, they go into specific religious uh, communities of uh, Satanists, heathens, which are Northern European pagans, certain um, Eastern European Orthodox uh, Christian churches. Uh, and recruit there. And what almost always happens is people in those communities that are being targeted for recruitment, online gamers is a very popular one now, um, will be unhappy with this and start to push back, but they may be outnumbered, the community may not be sympathetic, the community actually might be sympathetic to the white nationalists. So we encourage finding where people are pushing back and supporting them with whatever they need. Um, this is starting to happen right now in the yoga community. QAnon, this far-right conspiracy theory that involves pedophiles, supposed pedophiles and Satanists, have gotten their claws deeply in uh, into the holistic um, health community and, and in the yoga community. And there's a, a, a well-known yoga influencer who's starting to do counter-propaganda against it and get her friends to do this too. And I think this is absolutely brilliant because it cuts them off at their base. This is where they're getting new people and we want to stop this. Um, and so I really encourage uh, finding people who are pushing back inside of these communities and figuring out, you know, supporting them in whatever way they need to do it. The, the members of these communities themselves are the best people to push back against this stuff. If someone, this is a problem inside the Satanist community. If, if you try to go into the, you know, say like Nazi Satanists are bad and you're not a Satanist, like they're not going to listen to you. They're going to think you're attacking all of them. Um, this is really best done by other Satanists. And in fact, this is happening where there are anti-fascist Satanists who are trying to push the Nazis out of their milieu. And so, you know, it's, it's their place to do it. They know the internal dialogue's the best. They know the way to do this best. But you can back them up and provide them with the support that they, that they would like to have. Yo, I'm still feeling some type of way from the way that you describe it. There are yoga instructors, like there's QAnon yoga. Like that has, I, 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 that one statement knocked me down a couple steps with like how much hope I have in this country. <laughs> Honestly, right there, like that, that right did it. That is wild because usually you even expect yoga as being like oh it's a hippie leftist thing but no it shows how um prudent and how important social capital can be and um not just the these movements growing and gaining power but also fighting these movements i do like how you said that like it, it's someone from that community someone from um either the Satanist community or yoga community any of that stuff that's the best um person to like deprogram and talk to these people because it's like hey, one of us is talking to us. It, it's like that in any sort of context. You usually don't listen to outsiders, but if someone you trust based on your social boundaries of your community says something, you'll maybe not instantly agree, but you'll at least hear that out and give it more of an audience back then, which is why it's important to have um, co-conspirators who are former people who are like around these sort of spaces. So um, I, I think that really highlights that right there. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you know, the Nazis ha have a long tradition of being involved in yoga. In fact, there was like a uh, a Nazi commune in the 70s in North Carolina, and the, the leader of it got really into yoga and apparently wrote a couple books about Nazi philosophy and yoga. So, <laughs> what a country, man. This is a melting pot where all different cultures can come together. You have a little bit of Nazism from here, and then you have a little bit of yoga from another part of the world. It just comes together in this beautiful, what a great society. Um, I met, a, I met a black Nazi once. He was sent in to spy on us. It was a really interesting experience. No way. That is... <sighs> yeah, yeah. I actually met him uh, as he was undercover pretending to be an anti-fascist, and then he later got outed. How was he outed? Um, he had been... This is a funny story. He had been a cab driver in New York, and he had... Um, uh, there was a scandal. He would wear a swastika armband. He was this Dominican guy. He was a black Dominican, and he'd wear a swastika armband. And people complained. And so, you know, he got fired from his job, and th this was in the media. And then, so later, this guy was hanging around. He wanted to be involved in counter-organizing work. I was introduced to him, uh, and I kind of had to speak to him. A friend of mine who was black introduced him and kind of koshered him. So I was like, I don't want to talk to this guy, but if you say he's cool, like, you know, who am I to question you? But I was like, something's wrong here. He started showing up to events, and then someone had seen the media um, stuff about him being fired from his job as a cabbie, and, and there were pictures of him, and then saw him at the meetings, and were like, it's the same guy. 
So people did some you know, digging into him and ended up he was actually tied to the big Nazi party in the U.S., the National Socialist Movement. We found a picture of him at one of their events with their leader. I don't know what was going on between them, how he thought about this stuff. But like at some point, it doesn't matter, right? They're working together. Uh, and it, so the people who the guy who introduced me to him confronted him, uh, which was good. And they were like, we know your real name. They're like, hey, you say you're so and so. He's like, yeah, they're like, show us your ID. There's a video of this on YouTube. They're like, show us your ID. We think your old name's X. We think you're working with this Nazi group. And the guy just Damn. sort of like walked off and was never heard from again. Damn. Yeah. There's all kinds of crazy things that you will run into. People you don't expect to be involved in these movements are involved in these movements. It's not just all, you know, straight white men. It is a lot of them. You know, there's a lot of closeted people. There's a lot of people of mixed racial backgrounds who are repressing this. And it's like coming out. You find a lot of people from, you know, a Jewish, you often mix Jewish backgrounds who get involved in, in anti-Semitic movements. It creates all kinds of issues with people's identity, and, and it's a way for people because it's so emotionally based. They get all kinds of odd people get involved in these movements. Goddamn, yeah, that's. I, I feel like having your finger on the pulse of these things, you could talk a lot about this stuff. Um, and like I, I asked you, I, I can't. I feel like I have so many questions about this, but there's not enough time. Um, it, it's really incredible, though. Like, yeah, it's not just the Dave Chappelle skit. It's you actually have these people who are. Um, yeah, just in their ways. It just shows like the hell of uh, American education or whatever. Like not that everyone should turn out a certain way and that the government should teach that, but um, how you end up somehow following through the system and end up being like a black or any other type of marginalized group and then siding with the people who want to exterminate, use the word exterminate you and the marginalized group will always be extremely wild to me. 